This is Kathy Knipfer, instructor for Nursing 2333, recording the Managing Nursing Care Lecture for Chapter 3, Developing the Role of Leader. What is a leader? A leader is an individual who works with others to develop a clear vision of the preferred future and to make that vision happen. This leader must have the ability to inspire others to follow and move the profession or organization down a new path as needed when conditions change. Tuffy has identified eight characteristics of effective leaders. They engage in lifelong learning. They are service oriented. They are concerned with the common good and they radiate positive energy. These individuals believe in other people and lead balanced lives and see life as an adventure. They are synergistic or see things as greater than the sum of the parts. They engage in self-renewal. So at this time, take a couple of moments to write down some examples of activities or characteristics that you have that demonstrate each of Tuvi's eight characteristics of effective leaders. Here are some tips for becoming an effective leader. You should take advantage of leadership opportunities. Be the head of a committee or even a member of a committee to get started. But you should expect to stumble occasionally, but you learn from it. And you should also take risks, and that's how you grow. When you are a leader, you want to keep in mind certain things that followers want. They include respect, control of decisions that affect them, rewards and recognition, balance of life, as well as professional development. In today's nursing settings, one of two approaches to leadership is being used. The first is transactional. It focuses on what is thought of as the traditional boss image. The chief nursing officer and the directors and managers convey that they are in charge of the decision. The second approach is transformational. This approach relies on the group to provide input toward creating goals and setting standards. And in doing so, staff members value the organization as their own and expect to help shape the future. So with transactional, the leader is busy observing workers and correcting them when they are wrong. With transformational, the leader tries to catch people doing something right. There are rewards for each of the two leadership approaches. Transactional leadership requires the leader to trade favors for work performed. For example, someone who does some undesired task is offered a better shift or the opportunity to attend a conference. Leaders using this approach are busy observing workers and correcting them when they are wrong. These are the people who make you think that, that although you have done dozens of things correctly, the only thing they see is the one thing that isn't perfect. This type of leader also tends to maintain the status quo and not deal with something until it is an issue. Once it's an issue, however, this leader is willing to address it and typically will create more rules around the observable events and does not necessarily address the core issue. With transactional, the leader motivates through rewards for desired work. This leader monitors performance and focuses on problems and is reactive to problems. The transformational leader is always trying to bring groups together and asks proactively how to make something better. These leaders invite comments about decisions before they become final and also seek input regarding established policy to make it more realistic and valuable. They exhibit the behavior of challenging processes because they value that quality in others. They try to catch people doing something right. Finally, what is important to so many of us is that they connect with the personal things that make us feel valued in a workplace. Thanking, praising, 
and exhibiting caring are key attributes of this leader. So transformational leaders challenge the process, they bring people together, empower others, they model the way, and they attend to personal things. Each of these approaches affect the followers. With transactional, the followers fulfill the contract or get punished. They do the work and get paid. Errors are corrected in a reactive manner. With transformational, the followers share the vision. They have increased self-worth. They produce challenging and meaningful work. Coaching and mentoring happens, and they feel valued. Each of the leadership approaches affects organizational outcomes. With transactional, work is supervised and completed according to the rules. Deadlines are met, there is limited job satisfaction, and a low to stable level of commitment. With transformational, there is increased loyalty, increased commitment, increased job satisfaction, increased morale, as well as increased performance. Here are some questions to ask yourself. Which type of leader do you want to work with? And also give some examples of places you have worked that demonstrate either transactional or transformational leadership. What were the results of each of these types of leadership? How to develop your own leadership style. Selecting a mentor is one of the most important things you can do. Finding the person who is willing and able to be open to help you think through the various decisions about your practice and career is important. Leading by example simply means that you have figured out what the values of your workplace are and that you engage in developing those skills that exhibit those values. So when you lead by example, you focus on those values of the organization. Accepting responsibility. There's reward in victory and growth in failure. It's another way to develop as the leader. Speaking out conveys responsibility. This strategy also may mean that you volunteer to take on some additional challenges like joining a committee or accepting a project. It's important to share the reward. Leaders and followers should make each other look good. You should have a clear vision and identify and share the reason for the journey and empower followers to come along. Be willing to grow, research new ideas, concepts, and approaches, and participate in continuing education. Then we have to consider generational differences. Let's talk about the emerging workforce. The 1965 to 1976 generation are hard workers, but they do not have confidence in leaders and institutions. They change jobs frequently, focus on work-life balance, and seek performance feedback. The 1977 to 1995 generation has the same approach but they have no brand loyalty and a blatant disregard for status symbols. They are highly skilled in technology, they seek to figure out how something works, and are generally optimistic. They believe in themselves. Leaders must focus on keeping it exciting and support fun and balance. Younger generations want information about and input into decisions that affect them and benefits in the activity. The entrenched workforce, also called baby boomers, are the 1946 to 1965 generation. We need to understand generational differences to enhance performance. So we'll talk a little bit about that entrenched workforce in the next slide. The entrenched workforce, or the 1946 to 1965 generation, also known as baby boomers, 
are more likely to believe in the power of collective action because of their experience with the social movement in the 60s. They tend to mistrust authority. They are comfortable with proce the process of getting to a goal. They find the journey to reaching goals to be important. They are tolerant of meetings and discussions. They expect leaders to be professional, supportive, and have high integrity. They are honest, motivational, approachable, competent, and knowledgeable. To survive and thrive as a leader, the individual needs to have balance. They should set priorities and stay in control. They should have good time management and maintain work-life balance. They should have self-motivation. Often followers are critical, so internal motivation is required. They should have self-confidence and avoid the tendency to become arrogant. And they should maintain self-confidence in spite of setbacks. They should listen to all sides and make decisions based on the vision. They should maintain a positive attitude and think positively to create an environment where followers believe in the organization, in the leader, and in themselves. Much of the literature, both general and professional, conveys that leadership refers to people in the top position. But the reality is that leadership is exhibited in various roles within the organization. The focus of what people are leading is different. Staff nurses can lead efforts to create certain mindsets about the workplace. They have been instrumental in changing practices at the point of care and may have specific suggestions about how to rectify workplace issues. Nurse managers have challenging positions. Their role is to translate organizational policy into action and simultaneously respond to issues that are often critically pressing in terms of delivery of care to patients. How they balance those two dichotomous points conveys how they value patients and nurses alike. This manager role is critical to gain staff nurse input into larger decision-making processes. Nurse executives who remember that first and foremost they are nurses have an ideal opportunity to influence patient care practices. When they use transformational approaches, they gain strength from the group they are accountable for. Nursing students can start developing those effective leadership skills. Nurses can also be leaders in the community. They can be community opinion leaders or community volunteers. They can be appointed to an office or elected to an office. It can be a local office, a state office, or even a national office. All we have to do is act. As you can see, leadership is a challenge. Visionary and responsible leadership is very important and vital to the future success of nursing.